Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. This is your first time on the channel? Welcome on this channel, your friend, truck and SUV news, reviews, and cool stories, and some informational videos like this one. If you ever wonder what all these buttons do in a Toyota 4Runner, or we have Toyota Tacoma, or Toyota Tundra, you wonder what, like the A-Track system? This is a video for you. I'm gonna get the chief engineer on Skype. He and I are gonna go through kind of a, well, a demonstration of how this would work at like an off-road park. And we're gonna talk through these different features and tell you about how they work and when you should use them. We we'll get to all of that coming up right now. Joining me today is Mike Spears, chief honcho, off-road honcho for Toyota. I'm at, in this video, when I'm gonna to talk to him about the 4Runner. So I happen to have a 2020 4Runner outside TRD Pro, and I was gonna discuss the off-road equipment in it, and I thought, wait a minute, I'm talking to like the guy who's done Baja, who's done testing. He knows all this kind of stuff. Why should I do it? I'll let him do it. So I was thinking about doing this in the way of a scenario. So for example, let's say I took the uh, Forerunner to an off-road park. And the off-road park's got some hills, tabletops, descents. It goes, maybe I got some um, crawling over like some logs, situations like that. So let's walk through that scenario for a beginner person who's never been to off-road park in the Forerunner. So you drive into the, into the off-road park. I'm guessing the first thing we do is we do the multi-train select and select what train we'll be driving on. Is that kind of what you're thinking? Uh, it, it depends, again. So when you drive into the park, if, if the park is mainly set up for uh, crawling type conditions, what I mean is low speed off-road driving, absolutely. You want to put the vehicle in a four low, you want to decide what uh, multi-train select, what, what you're going to do, if it's mogul, if it's sand, if it's uh, rock. You're going to select these type of settings, and the vehicle is going to adjust the traction control on uh, what it can do to help you with wheel slippage. So it, it it's great if you're kind of a novice at off-roading. It's a feature that's wonderful. Um, if you're an expert, it, it's just enhancing your, your experience out there. Another thing to consider is airing down your tires. You'll read a bunch of forums and different sites. Everybody's got different opinions on airing down tires. A lot of people take it down about 10 PSI. That way, it flattens the tire a little bit. So if you're going over a rock or an obstacle, you have more rubber that goes over that rock. A little smoother ride and also doesn't puncture into the tire. Now, that's what a lot of people suggest when they're off-roading. Not everybody does this, and you don't have to do this. I know a lot of manufacturers have actually test the tires off-road at full PSI, because they want to see how far they can push it before it breaks. Okay, so let's let's break this down a little bit. So multi-train select is a dial that's on, on the roof, and I'll show a picture on the screen here in a minute. But what does that multi-train select really do when you switch the, when you switch the dial? What, what it's doing is it's changing your transmission mapping. So what I mean by that is how the transmission holds gears. So very first, you got to put in four low, and uh, four low is going to put power to all four wheels. It's also going to make sure that it's controlling the RPMs of the engine and the speed. So you don't want to over rev your four four low uh, because it's putting full torque. You're getting a one to one dis ratio uh, from from the transmission through the the front and rear differentials. A lot of technical talk. Basically, what it's saying is it's making sure that all the power that's available is getting to the wheels and getting on the ground. Then the multi-train select is going in and it's adjusting traction control of the vehicle. So it's the, the body ECUs, the powertrain ECUs begin talking. The ECU being the computers on board are talking to each other. And we're measuring wheel slippage at each wheel. So in some cases, if you're in uh, on rocks, um, you don't want wheel slippage. If you're trying to climb rocks, you're trying to climb up uh, uh, ruts in this, you don't want that wheel slippage. You want all that power to the ground. If, in your, you, if you're in mud or snow or loose material, you want wheel slippage and you want to keep the RPMs of the wheels high. Uh, otherwise, you just bog down and you're going to be stuck immediately. So what the system's doing is, is adjusting the characteristics of the vehicle wheel by wheel, which you can't do driving. And it's helping the driver navigate through some of this terrain that maybe, uh, if you don't have a lot of experience with, is going to be very difficult. Sure. So I got multi-train select. I got four low. So I've engaged transfer case. I got torqued all the wheels. I start going up a hill. I have some slippage. So is that where we do the rear locker? 
Uh, yeah, you can, but keep in mind, rear locker is just making sure both rear wheels are turning at the same time. And, and usually, you know, we have uh, automatic limited slip on our vehicles, um, differential. So as one wheel slips, you're applying power to the other wheel. And so what your rear locker is doing is putting power to both wheels. So you're driving, but you need to drive in a straight line. So the reason we have one wheel that turns and one wheel that doesn't is if you try to turn, if you ever drove a tractor and you have the locker on it and you try to turn that tractor, the tractor just continues, wants to go straight. And a vehicle, a truck is going to do the same thing. It's going to want to push you straight in a straight line, even though your front wheels are turning. So when you put that locker on, it's giving you that full power and it's pushing you up in a straight line. So if you have wheel slippage and you can't, you need more traction the ground, that's where the rear locker comes in into play. Climbing a rock face is a perfect example of that. But if you're navigating through uh, moguls or you're navigating through, um, you know, a, a rock, uh, a broken surface or something like this where you're using your sidewalls, you certainly don't want to use a locker there because it's going to drive you straight and you're you're trying to pick a line and follow that line so you're in and out you're moving you're using your sidewalls and your front steering to to make you navigate through that so if you had a locker on there the locker just wants to push you straight sure. and that's what you, know, you bottom the front end out real quick and and bad things happen but uh yeah so the locker has different different reasons and it's it's mainly to make sure powers the wheels you don't use it that often um uh, if you're out in moab and that it becomes much more more important in, in areas like that most most of our parks our off-road parks aren't severe enough to use a rear locker okay so but let's to, say we're let's say we're doing that rock bed going on and we want to use crawl control so how does crawl control work and crawl control is fabulous uh, quite honestly, I like to off-road. I've got a Land Cruiser 70 that, uh, with a manual transmission. And for me, uh, this type of uh, rock crawling with a manual transmission and a diesel engine is awesome. Um, so I was a little bit negative on the whole crawl control until you descend, you come down a rock face. And uh, there's different, different purposes for crawl control. Uh, I did a video where we... we you know, buried the truck up to the axles and we let the truck dig itself out. That's something, I don't care how good you are with your off-road skills, no human can do that. And, and that's because crawl control, again, is controlling wheel slippage at each wheel. And we're using the ABS system to help us do that. But we're limiting power to one wheel, transferring to another, and wheels can move independently. Uh, so we're putting power and we're allowing the wheels to do their own thing one wheel at a time. It's incredible. So if you're in this rock field and you're out uh, trying to, to pick a line and navigate through that, what the crawl control is doing is as it senses wheel slippage, you're in, say you get the front wheel up on, on, a, on a rock and the other wheel is basically uh, hanging off the side. It's shifting that power. It's sensing the wheel slippage, shifting the power to the drive wheel and making sure you can continue moving up through that rock face. If you get a, you're climbing a, a, a hill that's a, a loose material or, or rear rutted, again, it's going to sense that, that slippage. Just as we talked about the benefit of having that diff locker, you don't need a diff locker because I'm controlling each wheel independently. And it's going to pick the wheel that can drive the vehicle forward and it's going to apply power to that wheel. It, it truly is incredible. My favorite for it truly, as I mentioned, is coming down, descending down a rock face. So if you, we call it stair steps, but if you got these different uh, rock surfaces and you're coming down, you're two foot driving. So you're giving it a little gas and you're putting your foot on the brake and you're just trying to ease down this face. It, uh, if you ever have done that and you come down one face and you apply a little bit too much brake and you slide down the next one, crawl control never does that because it's, it's adjusting the power. It's keeping the torque of the engine where it wants to be. It's controlling the RPMs of it and it, it will just descend by itself. It's kind of like off-road cruise, cruise control. All you've got to do is pick your line and concentrating on, on that line steering. And for those that don't know, it, it does make some noise. Crawl control does make some noise, and that's, that's right. I mean, it should. 
the it, it, it makes a, it makes noise. Um, there's other systems out there that are similar to our system uh, that may be a little bit quieter. What you're hearing is the ABS uh, actuator, the solenoids in the actuator doing their job. And uh, uh, we're getting better on the sound uh, with the latest generations, uh, but you're really hearing the system work is what you're hearing. Uh, the, the unique thing about our system compared to everybody else's is ours works in forward and also works in reverse. No one else in the industry has a system that works both in forward and reverse. I think I'd probably use it in reverse a few times. <laughs> sometimes you get some spots, you're like, oh, no, and then you're, you're stuck. So what are we hearing there? So we're hearing the brakes and the traction control. And the catch. And everything's working in uh, cohesion to mitigate traction to make sure everything is as grippy as possible. And what situations would you use this in? So this is for steep inclines, um, declines, um, certain stuck situations like mud or dirt or sand, uh, and then to disengage to push crawl. And then, it's pretty cool, um, the engineer is Mike Swear, he actually engineered it to go backwards as well. So we can go in reverse, push crawl, activate it, and just do it in reverse. And that's going to be the benefit over, say, like a downhill assist control that you can do at full speed, both yes, ways. Correct. And you have you have one last feature that I don't know that I even understand: the A track. What what, uh, what is that? what's A track feed system? A, a, a track is uh, uh, incredible. So it's automatic traction control is what it stands for. Okay. And uh, a lot of our systems seem to do the same things, but A track is really. Uh, understanding the vehicle's understanding uh, wheel slippage again. So when you put a track on, and, and it depends on what transmission and what vehicle you have. But uh, w the way I like to demonstrate a track is if you ever started up, you said you use crawl control backing down. But if you ever started up, um, especially a rutted incline, you know, dirt face. Um, and maybe it's hard packed and you start up and you start getting wheel slippage and you can't go any farther and you know, okay I'm gonna give up I got to back down that's where maybe you like to use uh, use uh, our, tr our uh, crawl control because it controls how fast you get back down but it's a little unnerving um, if you have to back down a large hill right because you got to control your speed you don't want to overheat your brakes your transmission brake your engine braking is only gonna do so much um, a track the way I like to demonstrate it is if you pull up on that face and you can't go any farther you turn a track on you back up a few feet so let the vehicle roll back a few feet so that the a track can engage and you get out of the spot you're slipping and then you step on it and again it's controlling wheel slippage um, and especially on tundra where we talk about we don't have a locker we have a track on tundra that wheel slippage is now really activating our our traction control with our um, auto LSD and it's going to apply the apply the power to the to the wheels and allow you to climb up so like I said I like to demonstrate you back up okay give it a little gas and the truck will, will climb up the the hill that you just could not go up earlier okay so it's just giving a little extra assurance to the driver that yep we've we've got some help for you we're controlling that wheel slippage we're getting power to the ground and we can help you get up the, that face so with a track, it sounds like you could do you could control the speed by, through the gas pedal. With crawl yep. control, you have a setting that you turn on as far as what speed you want to use. Yep. So, so some differences there. We know about rear locker and we know about the uh, four wheel drive situation. So is there a is there a four low is activated in you have to activate that for crawl control and multi train select. Do you have to do you have to activate that for um, the a track as well? No, a track you can be in four high and activate it. Okay. Crawl control you've got to be in four low, okay. and that's really just to control the speed. Uh, the system uh, operates up to about five miles an hour, um, so it's really set for for picking that line and controlling it faster than that. Uh, having that that auto driving uh, one is really hard on the temperature of the system, so it's protecting the QDR of the system. The other is. Uh, in the areas that you're using crawl, crawl control, 
hopefully you're not uh, trying to blow through you know moguls or rock face or, or items like this it's uh, really to ensure that the driver is safe as they're using these systems sure sure makes sense well i think that's really good information and like i said i i don't know that i've ever really played around with the a track and the tundra although i get a tundra tomorrow maybe i'll have to go get some fun with it and uh, try that system out. <laughs> you should really try it because it's 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 super cool, and it, it you know it works in snow and other areas, um, but it is super cool, and uh, yeah, especially when you you think you can accomplish something. Uh, I wouldn't say hold my beer type of item, but right, right. Um, you you think you can climb a hill and you get up there and you're like, oh, now I got to back down this thing, and really it's uh, amazing to back up a couple of feet and let this thing take over. And you're just you know applying throttle and, and picking your line, and it'll help you climb those those items. Very cool, That's, very cool. All right, well, thanks, Mike, for joining me. Certainly. So there you go. There's information from Mike Swears, the chief engineer for this truck, talking about the different off-road systems. Hope you find that interesting. And remember, hit subscribe, click the bell, and smash the like button if you did. If you want to see more interesting videos like this, Hit me up at Tim at PickupTruckTalk.com. I will reach out to the engineers and we'll talk about the different various systems. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you down the road.